So I want to make sure that we both have these, the, we all have these two terms uh, very much embed embedded in our minds. Specular reflection is the kind of mirror-like reflection off of a smooth surface so that light obeys the law of reflection. In other words, the angle into the mirror or into the surface is equal to the angle reflected off of the surface. Diffuse reflection um, at some level obeys the law of reflection, but because the surface is so irregular, the light that we would send in would be reflected off in a number of different directions. And it's m at the microscopic level, it's obeying the law of reflection up here, but we, stepping back and looking at this picture, would see lights scattered off in a different direction. In fact, there would be more or less equal uh, s scattered light in all different directions. This is called diffuse reflection. There are objects out there that, both, that do both, that uh, depending on uh, time of day or depending on how smooth things are, you can see both diffuse reflection and specular reflection uh, off of uh, something. And here's a picture, for example, of a bridge passing over a river. And this looks like a pretty calm day out there. And the, the water is quite smooth. So we see almost what we would call a mirror image of that bridge. It is, in fact, light that's obeying the law of specular reflection. It's reflecting exactly off the water and into our eyes so as to make a mirror image. But all it would take would be a little bit of wind, and the surface of the water would be much rougher and wavier, and we would lose that mirror image. And in fact, you kind of see that over in this area here. In fact, the fact, the, the fact that people standing on the bridge can see the bridge is some evidence for the fact that there's specular reflection, because if there really is only really uh, diffuse reflection, or excuse me, the, the, there's spec diffuse reflection as well, because if there's only specular reflection, uh, they shouldn't see as much as they do. Here's, for example, a picture where the sun is coming up, or actually setting over um, the ocean. And this looks like a pretty choppy day, though the water is uh, kind of bumpy out there. I guess it would not be a good day for boating. Um, but as the sun sets, you can see this long streak uh, through the, in the water ahead of us. And you might ask yourself, what would this water look like uh, if, there was, if the water was much smoother? What would you see as a reflection of the sun in the water? Would it look like this, or would it look like something different? And the answer is that this light has to come into the, the water at a very small angle and has to leave at a smart, very small angle in order to reach our eyes. And the light that would be over here uh, would be coming off at such an angle that it would miss us altogether. In fact, in this picture, if the water was perfectly flat, you would see one reflection of the sun um, more or less in the middle of the water here, and that's all you would see. You wouldn't see this entire streak. But it's because the water is rough that you're seeing reflections off of every place in the water, and that's called diffuse reflection. In fact, when we draw planets out there orbiting us or orbiting the sun, there's always a little bit of a silly uh, misrepresentation of what's going on. You know, we, if we were out there flying past a planet, we would never see the entire planet because the planet is being illuminated from only one half of the, uh, its surface from the sun. And all we would really see is, th is the bright part. And that's the part that's diffusely reflecting light. And the back part would be dark. That, that's the part of the planet that's experiencing nighttime. It's a very simple explanation for why the moon goes through phases. I think if you were to ask a lot of your friends, why is it that at any, any given evening, many oftentimes we will see half the moon is dark, Many of them think that it's the shadow of the Earth, that literally um, the, the, the Earth's shadow is projected back on the moon and covers up part of the moon at night. But the answer is really that the moon is out there in space just like we are, and it's reflecting light from the sun. And depending on where it is relative to Earth, all the light is either reflected, or if it's off to the side of Earth, then only it's reflecting the light back toward the sun, and we only see the part of the, the moon that's illuminated, the back half of the the moon is, is dark at night. So the reason for the phases of the moon, the reason we go from the sort of sliver moon to a quarter moon to a full moon and so on, is because of, of the fact that the, the moon is being illuminated by the sun just like we are being illuminated by the sun. And just like at any instant in time, half of the Earth is dark at night. Um, at any instant in time, half of the moon is dark. It's just that we, it depends on where the moon is relative to us, whether or not we'll see that dark part. This is a picture just to get that, pic that idea a little bit uh, more solid in our head. Here might be the Earth. Half of it is being illuminated from the sun, which is over there. And here might be the moon orbiting the Earth. Notice that at any instant in time, half of the moon is illuminated. It's being uh, shined on by the sun from the left. And 
whether or not we would see that bright part and that dark part just depends purely upon where we are and where the moon is. So the person standing right here in the middle of the night on Earth looks at the moon right now would see a full moon because all of the moon facing the Earth is bright. The person standing, over, uh, standing here on Earth looking at the moon when it's come around to this side of the Earth would see a moon that's sort of half lit and that's more or less what we see. The person standing on Earth looking up at the moon when the moon is over this side of Earth would see something that's essentially dark because, well, only the back side of the moon is, is to us. And this is what's called the new moon. It's when you look out outside at night, and once in a while you can see a slight ring around the moon, but it looks really dark. So the phases of the moon are not because of the shadow of the Earth, but because the moon is obeying specular, excuse me, diffuse reflection, just like the Earth is. And I go back to my picture, because I think it embodies a lot of what we're talking about here. Um, this is a photograph that shows the sun coming from overhead, and we see streaks of light coming through. That light travels in straight lines, and the fact that we can see it um, means that the light had to take a turn to come over to us. If that light beam was just coming in, we would never see that light beam like this. Um, but the only reason we see it is because of a haze or some moisture droplets in this, in this air around us, and those are scattering light off to us. So uh, the light has gone through uh, and has hit leaves, which are absorbing light, and is, or has hit gaps between the leaves, so that's transmitting light, and sometimes we see uh, the scattered rays coming to our eye because of uh, the kind of diffuse reflection off of droplets of water in the, in the air around us. So I like this picture because it kind of embodies the idea of diffuse reflection that we've been talking about today.